Hustler is really, I don't know, I kind of very broken, like absolutely broken. Uh, last Worlds, he was absolutely broken, and then they nerfed him, and we're back to the international. Alistar is broken again. Hello, everyone. This is Darius from the Shot Caller, joined here by the NALCS legend that is Afromu. Uh, you guys just won against G-Rex. Uh, was that the kind of game that you wanted to show going into the tournament? I'd say about 60%. We definitely wanted to play more aggressive, take every opportunity that they presented us, and we did pretty well. Being able to hold our own, you know, hold vision control, set up the proper fights, because we definitely fought, had the fault yesterday versus Fnatic, where I felt like we played too slow, too scared, and they just, you know, played their comp very well. Just as they wanted, of course, from a European perspective, that was a bit more enjoyable to, to watch than, of course, to play. Uh, I was very shocked almost to see Someday play Orn yesterday mm -hmm. instead of like a, a carry top laner because I always felt like, okay, if Someday gets a carry top, he's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. He showed that today on the Orgot. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the team will heavily focus on now in the future? Uh, I think we set up our draft, you know, just so everyone has a decent matchup, you know, we can win later on, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, Someday on a carry is definitely a plus, but he's also willing to play tanks if we need to. Showcase yesterday, and I think just the whole team style is where yeah we need to be more aggressive in general. Everyone that comes to international, if you're the team that makes the play first, everyone else usually plays scared. And then once you get further into the tournament, then it's more even where it's like oh okay yeah they actually want to fight back, you know. But the first couple of days is where you know upsets happen, and then once you hit the second week. Usually teams that get to prep more, and you're like, oh, okay, we'll understand now this is their style. Then they turn it around. And they're like less scared of early mm. aggression and that yeah. kind of stuff makes sense for sure. I thought that Vicara also played a really, really good series. Mm. Um, you've talked with us um, with Overlay on, on the cast for a few minutes that uh, you're basically playing with both Cody and Vicara and scrims, and the, it's a bit difficult for you to like uh, adapt to both play styles and that kind of stuff. Mm. I felt like this season overall has been the season where we've seen a lot of change, like roster changes regularly with mm. throughout uh, multiple leagues and that kind of stuff due to more infrastructure and stuff. Do you think that the ability to adapt to different players on your team will be a key feature in the next seasons like 2019 2020 yeah i think having a bigger roster and then being able to play different styles is definitely a bonus uh it's my first season having to swap between 80 carries usually i just play with one you know yeah. double with 6a that's it and it's hard you know adapting but it's still fun because it requires you you know to talk a lot more think a lot more and i think it's improving me even though you know it's like growing pains. <laughs> you know, very, it's very hard to play like two ways because you're getting pulled in both directions. Great. Like, what what are, what are some of the examples that are like key differences between Cody and uh, Vicara? Mm, I think like uh, back in spring and summer, Cody likes to play you know hyper scaling mm. champions most of the time. You know, get to like certain core of items, and then take a fight. As well as, uh, it's pretty good at playing you know defensively, holding down the map if they're playing aggressive. And then Sam, you know, more aggressive type of baby AD carry. Uh, looking to pull it out on stage because I feel like he can be more aggressive, you know, play a little bit more. But I think it's since he, he is a rookie and had a sub in, you know, semis, third place match, and the whole worlds. Uh, it's a little rough for him, but hopefully he'll find his groove because, you know, when I do scrim with him and when we do duo, he plays a lot better than what I thought. So we could be very excited about the the full potential Ricara, of course. Uh, unfortunately, he was uh, under under heavy fire after those few, first few games, like uh, also game for third and that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. which I thought was very, yeah, I mean, on one hand, okay, like you can always judge the play itself, but you also have to keep in mind, he is literally just subbing in in such key moments that that must be such a pressured situation as well. Yeah, that's usually I don't like it, those kind of people. If someone has to sub in, it's like they didn't, you know, prepare for this. They didn't want to do this, but we needed them, so he's doing it. And I think it's really rude to critique, you know, play because, I mean, you're not thinking about the mental aspect, you know, how the team dynamic is. He has to fit in with what was already a team dynamic, mm. and then you bring in a new element. It's like, who knows if it explodes? Who knows if it works? So, especially he has to do it on stage. So... Yeah. Is the team dynamic? What's the team dynamic like now after the win? Is it like a lot more positive? What was it like after the loss to Fnatic yesterday? Uh, after the loss, we definitely had a lot of mistakes, and we felt like we didn't show our style or play aggressive. So it was like, oh fuck, you know, that's our bad. So coming into this next game, uh, we still have a positive mindset. 
even after a loss because we got to focus on the next game. But coming into it, it's always just about being confident. Everyone, you know, talking as much as they can. And he's literally popping off in comms, just screaming, fucking kill this AD carry, you know, all the time. So that was cool. And uh, even after the game, gives hope, you know, we're going to get out of our group. Confidence to everybody. And just got to improve from here. One last question. I feel like Alistar has been absolutely got here as a pick this mm -hmm. tournament so far. Mm -hmm. Can we even expect to see one more Alistar? Because I feel like he's just going to be perma banned from now on. Alistar is very broken. Like, absolutely broken. Uh, last Worlds, he was absolutely broken. And then they nerfed him. And we're back to the international. Alistar is broken again. So I think whatever you do that champion, he's just going to be so OP. Yeah. So it's each change where it's like 100 extra damage. Changed every matchup in the game, so range supports is just so hard to play because they can do Alistar now and you're dead. So, other champ that's just ridiculous is Kaisa. Right. Yep. Build any item in the game. She's an assassin, she has stealth, she can one shot you, percentage damage. Oh. That's way too much stuff, man. I don't know what's going on, but bot lane is uh, bot lane meta right now because the most OP champs are down there. Right, finally all the junglers can ha can have a valid reason to complain at this point. Although I feel like top lane has also become like hugely important in this um, in this event, like Aatrox and Orgot being yep. super popular. So as earlier against IG, even though he was on the tank uh, on Zion, he still like played amazingly in mid place and that kind of stuff. But yeah, bot lane insane right now. Uh, never give Mata basically any support. Like you need to force Mata yeah, nothing, on an AD carry or something. Just hope he plays Janna or something, but he's nuts on that too. Not happening, Proly. Thank you very much for your time. Anything mm -hmm. you want to say to the fans? We have a lot of European fans, of course, so anything mm -hmm. you want to say to them, maybe? Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, enjoying my time here at Worlds. Hopefully, we get to put on um, better performances than our first game. Uh, that definitely sucked, but thanks for watching. Right. Thank you so much, Afrimo. This was Darius from the Shot Call. Hope you had a good day. See you then. Bye bye. Hello everyone, this is Darius from The Shot Call, and if you just enjoyed that interview, I highly recommend also checking out our exclusive Worlds series titled E United. It gives you exclusive behind the scenes looks and like looks at the stage and fans and if interviews with fans and even behind the scenes interviews and all that kind of jazz. So if you really enjoyed this video, make sure to check that out. It's going to be worth it 100%.